welcome everyone uh, i hope you guys are having a great time for the vb local host so today we are going to talk about compromising iot cnc panels for unearthing infections so this is a talk based on our research for the last couple of months and we'll take you through some of the interesting findings and some real world deployments of iot cnc panels so let's get it started so first of all, I really will be thankful to Virus Bulletin team for allowing us uh, to present this research and giving us the opportunity to share the intelligence with the security research community. So before moving further, I we want to lay a disclaimer here. So all the security research that we are going to present in this talk is totally based on our independent research and it does not relate to any of our previous or present employers. So a little bit background of us. Uh, we've been in this uh, industry for more than 12 years. Uh, you know, contributed to the security research community in multiple ways. So you can visit our websites here and get a glimpse of it, what we have done in the past and what we are up to. Okay, so what is our agenda today, right? So we're gonna first take a look into why IoT threat or botnets exist, right? A brief history of IoT botnets, detecting, hunting IoT bots and CNC panels. We'll take a look into the compromising CNC panels, what are the techniques that we can opt for to go ahead with it, and then look into multiple IoT botnet CNC panels that we have found and compromised uh, during the course of this research so that you actually get a glimpse of it, what exactly how it looks like. And then we have uh, some demonstrations to actually show you, you know, the kind of research we have done and try to give you a glimpse of it, you know, what exactly the research entails to. So let's take a look into why IoT threats or botnets exist, right? So if you look, uh, a couple of this media captures that I have presented here, so in this case, so it looks like IoT devices are at the forefront of exploitation these days. And the reason for that is because the more and more the world is becoming connected, these devices are going to play a significant role. For example, you know, mobile phones, for example, network-based IoT devices, and sort of things. Most of these uh, devices are connected to the internet which means that if there's a problem in the configuration and there are any kind of security flaw in the way these devices are deployed, this could go into a problematic scenario because attackers can go after these devices and utilize them for nefarious purposes. So looking at the, some of these uh, you know, media reports, you can clearly see the kind of world we are living in and the kind of threats that we are actually uh, looking to see in the coming time. You know, we are entering into energy markets where, you know, IoT partners going to manipulate them at that market as well. Infrastructure, you know, manufacturing, that's a one part of it. But even for our day-to-day -day routine uh, purposes, right, IoT devices are being exploited a lot. And we'll take a deep dive into it down the lane. But it's a realistic problem. So we need a realistic solution for it. But even before going into, you know, developing some kind of strong, scary solutions to defend against these attacks, we really need to understand, you know, how these attacks occur and how we really need to gain intelligence out of it. So let's take a look into a potential view of botnet history. So starting from 2008 until now, we have seen many different variants of related to IoT partners. Uh, these partners are very specific to um, devices or they are being used as a broad-based partners, which means like they're actually going to go after multi, uh, you know, different types of devices irrespective of the, you know, categorization and then just try to simply build a botnet out of it. But there are certain botnets we are actually going to target very specific IoT devices. Irrespective of all that, you know, there are a lot of botnets that have been, um, you know, developed in the last many years. 
Interesting one, the resurgence happened with the Mirai. And then we have seen that how Mirai code has been reused multiple times to build additional set of IoT partners with different kind of functionalities that adhere to or the way attacker wanna go after. So they build, amend the code accordingly that suits their agenda to actually trigger infections and build botnets. But the history you look at, we are dealing with these uh, IoT partners for a long period of time. But these days, the volumes are pretty high as opposed to what we have seen earlier. Now, so we're gonna take a deep dive into detecting and hunting of IoT binaries and CNC panels. And there are a couple of uh, you know pretty interesting techniques that we have opted to actually go after at first detection of IoT binaries, and then how we actually went after you know detecting CNC panels. You can similarly opt these techniques in your day-to-day -day routine uh, uh, jobs to actually detect the CNC panels. Remember visualization, which means you really need to first find out where are these CNC panels located. And then at the end of the day, once you detect these panels, then you can actually go after compromising them. So it is very, very important how you're going to detect where the bot is communicating back to the command and control servers. So let's take a look into it. The very first important part is a mapping the remote servers, which means that you really need to find out where exactly the IoT bots or IoT binaries are located. Because what happened in a simple uh, you know, infection model that once you exploit an IoT device and then you actually create a temporary file and then you basically utilize the already present uh, um, command tools such as curl, wget to fetch these files from the remote servers and then installing pod binaries into those compromised IoT devices. And then these devices are starting connecting back to their command and control servers to actually transmit the data back and then you know steal uh, very interesting or sensitive information out of the IoT devices. So what are the different techniques? You know, if you go for a broad-based scanning, you can actually go after, um, you know, detecting, you know, indexed uh, directories on the remote HTTP servers. And then you can also build certain signatures for different architectures, which means that let's say if there's a file which is going to run on x86 architecture on the MIPS one, and few others, so you can build that and keep on scanning the open or exposed uh, indexed directories. Anonymous FT servers are also being used. Uh, reason for that is you can you can actually you know uh, basically dump a couple of bot binaries there, and since there's anonymous access, anybody can access to it. And then from compromised IoT device, they can fetch more binaries out of it, or a direct downloadable links to the bot binaries. Another interesting point. Uh, where we actually want to go after, you know, how we can detect CNC panels. So hard-coded CNC server IP addresses and bot binaries. So when you reverse certain bot binaries, CNC panel, uh, you know, identification, which means like the IP addresses are hard-coded into it. And when the, as soon as the bot is installed on the IoT device, it connects back and starts, you know, transmitting the data back to the command and control server. So you can use reverse engineering techniques to actually go after extracting some of the CNC servers. IP addresses. Another interesting uh, technique is extracting CNC panel artifacts from the network traffic generated by the IoT device. So, which is very much important because as soon as you are actually checking the network level behavior of a couple of IoT devices, you can also detect the kind of traffic that is being flowing from the IoT devices to the remote servers. Uh, you can also build IoT device profile as well because you can select and detect why this particular IoT device is communicating in such a way and why it is connecting back to the remote server which is outside of the organization just for a one simple heuristic or a signature or an anomaly detection. And then you can also figure it out, you know, where it is being connecting to and then you can also extract some of the CNC panel IP addresses out of the network traffic. One of the interesting thing is that, you know, a couple of these Mirai variants have hard-coded XOR encryption keys. And if you extract the XOR encryption key, you are able to actually decrypt the, you know, encrypted traffic 
basically the data and then you can figure out what kind of information is being sent to the CNC panel. We'll take a, basically we're gonna look into the, you know, a small demonstration later on in this context. Memory forensics to extract CNC information from the active processes. If you see that, you know, IoT botnet operator or designer is so using some advanced techniques or so some ways that, you know, whenever the IoT binary is installed on the compromised IoT device and when it runs, uh, the CNC uh, server addresses are generated on the fly. Uh, it's like a dynamic generation of those addresses and once these processes are active, you can perform memory forensics to dump certain kind of, uh, you know, CNC panel IP addresses out of it if it is, you know, present in that. Um, in the design of that IoT bot or a binary. Another interesting part is to detect CNC panel is in a broad-based scanning approach which is like identification and reconnaissance of potential suspicious IoT devices. Multiple administrative interfaces, Telnet, FTP and HTTP. So in this case, we are not only gonna look after where the CNC panel resides, but we also wanna take a look into uh, the exposed administrative interfaces of these IoT devices and then try to actually compromise them. And once you do it and try to extract certain artifacts out of those compromised IoT devices to see uh, where exactly the CNC server is located, uh, looking at the way IoT bot binary communicates. For example, we don't have an access to the IoT bot based binary, but we are seeing some suspicious traffic is being generated from the IoT device. And if, if in that is the case, or we can simply find that, you know, the certain IoT device IP addresses are treated as suspicious. So you can actually basically go after and try to see if you can basic kind of compromise the administrative interface and get into those IoT device and try to see if there are bot binaries are available there. So there is always a, this reverse hacking approach where we actually going after compromised IoT devices, then actually extracting information related to CNC panels from there as well. Uh, we have tried this approach and it worked pretty well as well. Another interesting technique is broad scanning of remote servers on the large scale based on known indicators. The idea is, is like, you know, you can scan broadly of the, you know, the remote servers on a large scale based on known indicators and try to find out, you know, if we see any kind of, uh, you know, CNC server uh, for specific borders available there as well. So we can use multiple these type of techniques to actually go after detecting the CNC panels. Now, once you have detected the CNC panel, we really need to go after compromising it, right? There are a couple of te techniques that you can use, but I've used, uh, what we, what we are discussing here is like a couple of interesting one that we have actually utilized during our research, compromising front end interfaces. What that means is like gaining access to the administrative interfaces. Uh, so we have detected a CNC panel. It has like a front end interface, uh, depending on what kind of customer custom protocol has been used to create and build the communication channel and the way administrative interface works. You can conduct brute force attacks to actually try to, you know, gain direct access uh, to the administrative interface of the CNC panel. That is the one important part. Another interesting part is the compromising the backend databases. See, remember, whenever the multi bots, right, you know, multiple IoT bots residing on compromised IoT devices connecting back to the CNC panel, they need to have uh, some database at the backend, which means that uh, the, all the information related to the compromised IoT bots are going to store there. So in this technique, what we are going to after, we are going to find a uh, like exposed MySQL databases. For example, MySQL is heavily used as a backend database for CNC panels. And then actually we are going to compromise it directly by finding, you know, either vulnerabilities in it or cracking accounts so that you can get in a database account access. And once you get it, you can basically go through all the tables that are available there and dump the, you know, username and passwords for all the different IoT devices, basically IoT bots that are, you know, running active on the compromised devices. And there are many scanning tools available. We'll take a look into one scanning tool later on. Vulnerability exploitation, basically going after finding vulnerabilities into CNC panels in the custom protocols, or for example, if the CNC panel is using HTTP or Telnet and all that, and try to find vulnerabilities in that and basically getting direct access to the CNC panel there. 
reusing, reuse of credential. Uh, this is a very important uh, approach. In this case, what we have seen that, you know, sometimes you go after compromised IoT devices and you find out some active, uh, you know, credentials, username and a password, and you build a huge list of those uh, credentials. And basically use, uh, using those, that um, list of username and a passwords to actually target CNC panels, conducting brute force or account cracking attempts to see if you can get access to it. So basically sometimes, um, you know, these passwords or credentials that we extracted out of compromised IoT devices, they work pretty well on the CNC panels as well. So reuse credential approach is an important uh, technique that you can also use in your environment to basically go after compromising IoT partner CNC panels. So let's take a look into the interesting case study. So on this particular slide, you can take a look into one of the MySQL scanner. The tool is being designed to actually go after, uh, you know, some of the exposed CNC panels which are running MySQL servers and as a backend database. And basically it's gonna go after scanning of those instances, try to find out the, you know, vulnerable deployments. And once you get an access to the MySQL server, then it's gonna go to each and every single table in that MySQL database to dump all the credentials, username, passwords, or anything interesting information related to IoT bots that are running on a compromised devices. So this is the kind of approach we go after automating the uh, different techniques so that we don't spend too much time into and avoid manual intervention there. Just run it. You can use these kind of tools for a broad based scanning, provide the you know host list and then based on the intelligence that you gathered earlier and then also provide a list of the CNC uh, panels, including some of the credential list as well, but it worked pretty well. We need to automate if you really want to go for broad based scanning, try to ensure that we found multiple infected, uh, you know, either IoT devices in this case, or basically more specifically, let me put it in this way is IoT partner CNC panels. So, we have discussed uh, interesting techniques related to, you know, uh, earlier we talked about in detecting CNC panels, detecting IoT binaries, and also going after compromising some of the CNC panels. This is uh, our in-house tool, which we have utilized earlier. The, it is very interesting one. The interface is on a telegram. The way we have structured it, you know, utilizing this tool directly from your mobile as well. You have a telegram service. The backend is created in such a way you can send commands via this telegram service, and then you can get all the details of specific IP addresses and all that. So in this case, you can see we have an IoT malware tracker, and then we also have an IoT malware sandbox. So uh, we have actually given you a few examples and, um, we just simply send a command like here, CNC online. So it's gonna guess what are the IoT CNC server that are online based on the techniques that we have discussed earlier. And if we wanna run IoT, you know, a sandbox uh, execution for a infa kind of specific IoT binary, you can also do that. Provide the URL directly is gonna do and conduct all the behavior analysis. So this is how in in-house we have automated it. And we utilize this approach for a couple of months and uh, utilizing, and we keep on updating our techniques and tactics that we have discussed earlier. I hope this one is in a pretty interesting, <laughs> uh, you know, tool to look at. Uh, and you can also go after building these kind of similar tools as well. Now let's talk a little bit about fun and profit here, right? Sometimes you know you can go after compromising the CNC panels. And sometimes you could easily find out that, you know, you're not able to compromise, uh, you know, the remote server running CNC panel for IoT specific IoT partners. But then there's that, you know, approach that we used to follow, go for a crash and a kill, right? What that means is that, you know, is it possible that you can actually crash the remote CNC server? Uh, and uh, it, you might not able to compromise it completely, but at least, uh, you know, you are able to have some fun <laughs> there as well. So 
It is based out of like, you know, for crashing remote services, a little bit based on the research where you actually found some kind of vulnerability or a design flaw in some of the IoT bot binaries or the way IoT CNC panels are deployed. Uh, because they have to create some network service and then you connect to that network service and then you're gonna get access to the CNC panel. So one of the one like um, the majority of the Mirai variant has uh, some issues associated with it. Um, you know, if you look for the vulnerability detection point of view, you can actually go after analyze the source code, detect for, you know, buffer allocation functions, and then try to see how the buffers have been allocated. If there are any kind of, uh, you know, uh, buffer has been bounded for specific ranges. And if not, you try to see what kind of limit has been set up there. If you know the limit, you can actually trigger some buffer overflows there to actually crash the network service supporting CNC panel functionalities. So in this case, this is what happens when you actually go after, uh, you know, Mirai or some of its related variants, uh, uh, CNC panels, you can basically use this code, create a socket, create a buffer, you, if you can send it up continuously, you can basically crash. So in this case is that, you know, research is not entirely sometimes focused on, um, you know, compromising CNC panels for building intelligence and sharing that intelligence with the security research community so that we can build strong solutions. But it also depends upon detecting some vulnerabilities in those CNC panel software as well. This is a one simple example. We want to talk about it so that you can a glimpse of it and you can, you know, do more research based on these kind of things when you are analyzing the source code or binaries. Now, so let's just revisit, you know, we started with, uh, you know, why, what is the IoT botnet history looks like, why IoT, uh, you know, threats and botnets matter, you know, some of the interesting techniques related to, you know, IoT bots, um, hunting and detection of IoT binaries and CNC panels. Then we look into some of the interesting artifacts related how to actually go after compromising CNC panels. Uh, we also went through one of the source code, the which is related to one of the MySQL scanner uh, to conduct automated uh, detection of backend uh, uh, databases using CNC panels and enumerating the uh, IoT bot tables on the fly once you get an access to the database. Then we take a look into some of the interesting uh, you know, tools that we have developed in-house, uh, a Telegram-based front-end with the backend to actually build IoT tracker and the malware detection service. And then we actually went through some of the fun and profit scenarios, you know, how certain vulnerabilities not, uh, you know, help you to create uh, an exploit where you can complete compromise, but you get at least crash certain CNC panels and that can be useful in certain scenarios as well. So after going through all these things and going through techniques and tactics, now take a look into a multiple IoT bots CNC panels. Uh, what that entails to, what we are going to show uh, you here is, couple of CNC panels that have been compromised based on the techniques that we have discussed earlier. And this will actually give you the flavor, how it looks like. So now in this, uh, look at this particular uh, slide, you can actually get a feel of, you know, how the MANA IoT botnet CNC panel looks like, right? So once you get into the CNC panel, it actually show you a lot of uh, different commands that it supports. And then if you look at the, some of the DOS modules, it can tell you what kind of denial of service attacks it can trigger from there. Yani basically, it's going to tell most of their compromised IoT devices to start uh, you know, launch of denial of service, targeting specific IPs, or uh, basically go after impacting the availability of remote servers. Interesting one. Now look at the another example of Vivid IoT botnet CNC panel. You can get a glimpse of it, how this IoT Bordner CNC panel looks like. Similarly, we're just, you know, giving you a few, uh, you know, overview of, you know, how the service stats look like, you know, what is the cost associated with launching the denial of service and, you know, sort of things. But this actually gives you the idea how the IoT Bordner operators operate in real time and how the CNC panel looks like. Take a look into the another example here is a Kawai IoT botnet CNC panel. You can get a feel of it, how it looks like. Another one is a Verizon IoT botnet CNC panel. 
and you can clearly see you know once you log in into that uh, you know command and control panel how much uh, you know uh, infections have been triggered already what kind of commands that are available and then what kind of denial of service modules that are available that you can trigger uh, I'll give you a quick demo of this uh, CNC panel as well later on so that you can get a feel of it how it looks like and another one interesting example is the goon IoT botnet it basically you know another IoT botnet uh, that actually go after uh, you know launching different type of attacks uh, from the compromised IoT devices. But once you get inside of the IoT panel, you can get a feel of it, how it kind of look like. Now, at this point of time, you can get a you know flavor of a couple of different CNC panels uh, that we have discussed. Uh, and basically we found, you know, uh, compromising scenario uh, where we actually able to penetrate into those panels and then able to give you a glimpse of it how it looks like in real time but even if you are doing an interesting research in this you can use the same techniques and tactics and you can build very you know intelligence uh, pool with multitude of resources and then you know different uh, signature heuristics you know anomaly detection based uh, integrators and you can go after launching a large scale uh, scanning in a controlled fashion to detect these kind of uh, devices and basically coming up with a building of security solutions where we can actually detect and prevent against these kind of attacks. Now let's go through a couple of interesting demos and take a look into it. The very first one, this is related to extracting the ZOR key out of the Mirai and a couple of related variants. And once you extract this kind of ZOR key, it is very easy for you to actually decrypt all the network traffic, basically the data that is sent from the compromised IoT devices to the CNC panel. So this actually gives you why reverse engineering is important and how we can actually utilize to detect CNC panel because if network traffic is going on, data is going through the remote server, you have the identity, but what kind of additional data is being sent by that compromised IoT device? So let's take a look at it. So in this case, uh, you know, we are gonna use Radari and to actually look into some of the, you know, uh, one of the vulnerable version uh, I won't say a vulnerable version. It is basically one of the IoT bot binder here. And we're basically going into the disassembly mode here. There you can see like it starts searching for a 12 bytes in a specific memory address range. And we are basically here looking into specific offsets. And you can see that, you know, after uh, disassembly, we are able to extract some of the you know x86 uh, instructions here how it is being performed what it is exactly looks like and now you can clearly see this is the this is the string and this is the primarily most important part uh, of the zor key which is being used multiple times here so when you use this key again and again uh, which basically like adba adva or you can also try for is a basic offset here with that uh, memory address that is pointing to this string you are able to find what kind of key is directly there and you can reiterate it to the multiple offsets to build the whole ZOR key and you can utilize that ZOR key to decrypt the network traffic so the idea in here is that we have to actually perform reverse engineering the IoT bot binaries to extract uh, the interesting information basically the hard-coded ZOR keys in this case Now let's look at the another interesting demo here. Uh, if you remember, uh, when we're going through the, you know, some of the examples of the compromised CNC panel, the Verizon one, so this is a, a little demo of it, so you can get a feel of it. Enjoy the little music. So we're logging into the CNC panel here. It's a Verizon. I already bought net CNC panel. So you can see come all the you know commands that have been reiterated here. Dumping the info and try to give you the feel how the CNC panel behaves, right? In the real time. So you can clearly see 
since this is a now you can clearly see commands and other things that are supported here for us our research is entirely focused on understanding the behavior of these CNC panels, how they are actually advancing on a regular intervals of time with the new variants of IoT botnets, and to control every single assessment, the every way of intelligence gathering approaches that we have is all controlled um, way toward any kind of impact on the real world. So it's all about being in the part of the conducting research in a responsible disclosure. The idea to share with the research community is to highlight how they can also utilize uh, these kind of techniques and tactics to build stronger threat intelligence solutions. Now take a look at the another one. Uh, here in this case, the idea is to actually show you a number of different IoT partner CNC panels. So this is another variant called it Kawari. Most of these, you know, bot IoT botnet CNC panels kind of support custom uh, developed, uh, you know, CNC panel code. Here you can see the another one, CNC panel. We will log into it. There is the another one. So what we are doing here is like, you know, we are going to, through multiple IoT CNC panels in a one go. So you can clearly see here. Another one, Danknet. So you can imagine at this point of time, how many different IoT botnet CNC panels exist. We have just given you a flavor of a few ones, but we have detected a large set of IoT partner CNC panels. Interestingly, you can clearly see the masses. Yo admin, don't share logins, I have a log. Don't attack to the government IPs, duh. If you wanna buy a score, this and that. This is like a crimeware services. You know, the, uh, the botnet operator is actually utilizing this compromise, uh, this uh, IoT botnet to actually conduct some kind of uh, nefarious operations if somebody wants it as a part of the crimeware service model. We are not interested in these kind of things. All we are interested in is how we can build strong and robust intelligence out of it so that we can feed into our detection engines. Now, what is the inference of this talk? What we have, uh, you know, believe that we conduct this kind of research to actually build strong security, detection and prevention solutions. We want to share this kind of threat research intelligence uh, with the community. We believe that it's a, it's a dual communication channel where you share with the community and you learn from the community. And Virus Bulletin is, is one such community which is actually sporting a large set of security research all around the world so that they can share their work and you know make the try to you know reduce the impact and risk associated with these botnets. So our inference in this case is very simple and the street. Penetrate the CNC servers to build intelligence to subvert and defend attacks in the IoT hemisphere. Very much important, until unless you're not gonna find out how the CNC panel operates, how they are designed, how they are developed, what the customer product, sorry, custom protocols they are supporting, and all those sort of things. And if you don't go that deep, it is really, really hard to subvert these attacks, right? Because we never have an idea. If you don't visualize the security threats, there is no way you can prevent it because you don't have any idea how these attacks operate and how botnet operators actually go after conducting very illicit operations on the internet. But believe it, build intelligence, conduct research, penetrate, again, rebuild uh, strong intelligence indicators and actually enhance the security state of the solutions. So that being said, questions and queries, uh, I will more than happy to answer any kind of queries you have and take this discussion to the next level. Uh, you can visit our website and feel free to ping us directly there or contact uh, directly by there. 
looking forward to more discussions. At last, we really want to be thankful to Virus Bulletin Committee again for giving us an opportunity to share and present our research in this space. Thanks.